Good morning, this is Kelly Hobart from Alpaca Direct. And I'm here, I've been working on some cabled projects, uh, mostly for baby items. I have a, one of our staff members, Garrett, is having a little boy. So I've been working on a lot of little baby things and I'll show you some of the things. Now these were baby mitts that I had before that the baby grew out of, that I was gonna get out, give out to them before I could get it to them. So these are little popover mitts for newborn babies and it has a nice long cuff. So I can, it can kind of grow with the baby or you can just flip it up and pull it out of the way like that. I thought they were kind of cute. And I like that the cabled pattern is on both sides. And then I had these little booties that I made. And these booties are super cute. And they're nice for newborn babies. They can stick their feet right in it. And it's made out of sueno. So the sueno is a bamboo merino blend. And they're super cute. Hey, I like those. Good morning, everyone. Oh, Jersey, yeah. I've been a busy Alaska. bee working on knitting for um, this new baby that's coming along. Uh, Garrett is having his first child, a little boy, and so we are, I am knitting way trying to get things, and this is going to be the little ribbed hat, and it's going to have the same kind of cables as this on the outside, and it's also using sueno. It looks kind of rough and ropey when you first um, knit it, but once it's blocked, it looks like that. So... It's the Sueno yarn is perfect for a baby because it's super wash and it's machine washable. Although I don't recommend washing these special items in the regular wash machine and dryer because um, even though it says super wash, it can make the fabric feel more stiff than you would like. And since we've spent so many hours making these things, we want them to remain nice and soft and squishy. And so I'm... Um, knitting along, having a great time, using one of my favorite yarns, Sueno. And that was the prize for last week, is this lovely. It's Sueno, but it's a Sueno Tweed, which is a newer yarn. Do you know which one was the winner for, what color was the winner for last week, Jim? Yes, I do. It'll be which a surprise. One? I'll keep it for later. Oh, <laughs> I wanted to know what the winning color was. I always like um, learning what you guys like and what colors you find exciting. And I was thinking the surprise for this week, or the prize, shall I say, for this week is a nice extreme boot in either the gray or the brown. And these are extreme boot socks. And they're made out of a lot of, they have almost 50% alpaca and they have some acrylic and nylon and elastic in them. And they are full terry on the inside, meaning they have those little loops on the inside. See the little loops? And it makes for a really soft and warm and squishy sock. I like to use these for slippers. Do you use these for slippers too? Sometimes. Yeah. But you know uh, what? There's several people from Alaska that are on. Yeah, so see how the weather is up there because we usually what happens there ends up here. So. Yes. Yeah. So all of you out there, yeah, let, especially those of you that are in Alaska, let us know what the weather's like there. Here we're having like an Indian summer. It is beautiful. It's gorgeous outside. And we were able to go camping over the weekend in our Airstream group. And uh, Steve and Debbie hosted us and it was lots of fun. We had a great time. So Oh, tell him what happened with the guy with the kid is lawn and about his seeds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the gentleman, Steve, we went to his house and he is so cute. He is like a rocket scientist. He's super, super smart and he's very meticulous about everything. And um, so one of the visitor's dogs had some stickers on it and um, the, the dog owner picked off all the stickers and then he went... Um, uh, he had the seeds in his hand and then he went out the front door and threw them. <laughs> and Steve, the owner, said, where'd those seeds go? Because <laughs> I guess they're noxious weeds. <laughs> and so he was uh, very distressed because he was trying to find those seeds. And of course, there's no way to find them. <laughs> so I imagine he'll have a little more spraying to do. <laughs> <laughs> to get rid of those weeds. But anyway, so if you, all those of you that have babies out there, this set that I made, it, you could see the hat. And remember last week I had the baby Uggs that I made? Here was the finished product. 
I finished, I just put a little Pico edge, even though it's a boy, we like something cute and kind of dainty looking. And they look like baby Uggs when you um, put them out. And I thought, you know, that's such a neat gift. Do you see the baby, the little booty? It, it's their 100% baby alpaca. This is our Bravo Petites. And um, I, I wish you could feel how soft it is, but you see how sweet they are? And they have a really nice halo. And look at the little mittens. This, These mittens, I didn't put any decoration on them. I just did them um, just very simple, just the Pico um, the edge. And that went this time for these mittens, I had to do a Pico cast on instead of a Pico bind off. And you guys know out there that um, just because it says it's Pico, the cast on and the bind off can be different. Like the um, the cast on for a Pico cast on is uh, really loose by nature. So I had to go down to like a sock needle size and then I was able to get it look like that. Isn't that cool? Anyway, I'm having lots of fun with the baby stuff as I always do because it's, um, I don't know, it's just a joy to knit things for baby. And you can see how I made on these little popover mints. I don't put a thumb, of course, because new babies can't hold their thumb out for you. But you can see that it has a nice long cuff and you can fold it over. And I like the Pico cast on and the Pico bind off because it gives a little extra stretch. There's no way for this baby that it's going to be tight anywhere on the arm of the baby. And so that's why I thought that was kind of a neat um, cast on and bind off. And you can see, can you see how flared this is on the edges? So if you guys are making baby uh, projects and you want to use a, a Pico bind off or a Pico cast on, it makes for a really nice stretchy edge for babies that is not going to constrict their little legs or leave any mark on their skin. So I'm just knitting along. Um, it was the um, from last week's oh. um, video, and it was using that patio uh, that pattern. But I did the um, knit one pearl one ribbing, and it didn't call for the pico bind off. Mm -hmm. And so, but anyway, it was fun. So I was thinking today um, it would be fun to talk about cables and how to fix mistakes if you have a mistake in your cables. So I was going to come over here and take a look. A couple questions that I was thinking about people that are looking at cables and saying, um, how do I fix it? Or, you know, a um, couple questions the newer people might have is, um, what if you see, you can see I made this cable turn right instead of turn left because it was supposed to be a left leaning cable and it's only a couple of rounds down, just a couple of rounds down. So what are you showing here? It's how to fix a cable and turn it in the other direction. Now, one of you guys might ask, um, can you ladder down and fix a missed cable? And my answer to that is no. And the reason why is when you cable, you're going to, like if you um, make a left-leaning cable with um, four stitches, you'll have that working yarn, the running thread is, uh, the working yarn is going to go right across four stitches. So you need about this much extra yarn. But if you haven't done a cable and you missed the whole cable, you'll be short by about that much yarn. Mm -hmm. And it'll pull it in too tight. And um, I mean, you might be able to force it, but it's going to have a pinched look because it's going to be short about that much yarn mm -hmm. to do it. And so um, if you miss your cable altogether, you will just have to go down to where the cable was missed and then pick your stitches up. And I'll show you how to fix the cable first. And then I can just show you how you might go down to a cable section and if you had missed the cable altogether and be able to do it. So first of all, when you're cabling and um, you're, say that you um, wanted to learn how to count. So like on these cables, I don't, I don't have the pattern in front of me, but a good way to count is I always go to the left-hand side of where the cable is. And then I find that hole and the hole is created when we do a cable, okay? So when you do a cable, that is round one of your series of knitting rounds for cabling. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if I go into this other hole up here, let me tell you, I can count it for you. Do you see these ladders right here? 
So it's kind of a little bit hard to see on the tweet. So the first round will be where the cable was done. And then you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven more rounds. And then you have another cable round. So on this set section of cables where it's a little bit tighter of a twist, you can put your needle in there and then find the hole on this side. So this one only has a cable round and then three more rounds and then another cable round. Do you see that? So when you miss a cable, it's important to cable in the exact spot and have the correct amount of knitting rows in between because otherwise your cable might look off a little bit. Right. You know, if you're doing a cable, say every five rounds, so you have um, five rounds of knitting and then one cable round, you'll have a total of six of the little ladders one two three four five and six you would have six okay and so the easiest way to count how many rounds you've done in between each cable and where your cable would go is to just find that opening where the cable was done and then find the other side of the opening Doink. right there where the next cable was done and it's kind of transparent you can see it pretty easily can't you yeah and so that that's how you count um where your cables are so that you know where you need one. But say that this one is twisted to the right, and now I want to make it go to the left so it matches these down here, so it's back on track. So you could ladder way down, and you could fix all these. If you had one twist that was going in another direction, you would just need to know that, you, that the first round is a cable round where the hole is, and then when you get to, if you're supposed to have four ladders in between each one, you want to make sure you have the four ladders present and then cable the next round. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So um, here I am. So this one, what I really need, this was a cable for right. And what I really needed was a cable for left. So all I would do to fix this is I've knit to right where I knit in my normal pattern to right where I wanted to fix that cable, right? So I have my working yarn right here. And that just makes it easy. So when I take these eight stitches and slide them off my needle, I will be able to slide them off my needle because my needle's right here. Do you see how that works? So I wouldn't work these, these stitches because it'll just be more yarn that I have to back up or take out or redo. I would work to the spot not through the spot that I'm going to be working. Okay. So then I would take it. You would count two, four, six, and eight. So I have the eight stitches that I'm going to take off my needle. So now watch this. So what I would do is I would take my, this is your working yarn. Think of it as your working yarn. Okay. There's one round. And that was where the cable was. Okay. So now the cable's off. And I know that it's off because you see I can make the stitches lie flat now. So now what I want to do is I want to make it a cable left. So I find the my working yarn from that ladder, from that round. Okay. Make sure you get it. And the way that I know is it's the one that's the lowest down. So you'll really have to pay attention to where your um, ladders are so that when you work them, you're working them in the order they were actually knit and not twisting them and making it look funny, you know? So when we do a cable left, we let, let's stick all these stitches back on our needle and we're just gonna pretend as if we're using this working yarn and we're just gonna cable left and we're gonna fix it. So you'll see that I have my um, knitting needle and I'm putting my right hand leg in front. That's how you orient the stitches so that they are on the needle correct and they're not, um, they're mounted correctly on your knitting needles, okay? So when you do a cable four left, you're going to slip four stitches 
on to your cable needle or onto your knitting needle. I like to cable without a cable needle, but if you wanted to use a cable needle, this is a great time to do it. You would take four stitches and slip them onto the cable needle with your working yarn in back. Because you're gonna twist this left and you're gonna be holding your uh, stitches in the front, you don't want your working yarn in the front because it'll be in, in the way of your ability to be able to um, work your stitches. So then as soon as you slip four stitches onto your right hand needle, you would go ahead and knit four. Two, three, and four. Okay? Then what you do is you take those four stitches that you did not knit, but you just slip them, and you hold them in the front. Okay? Then you very carefully Take your knitting needle out and slide those back on to that right hand needle because those stitches have already been worked and you can tell because your working yarn is coming right out of that last stitch. And then all you need to do, now when I'm doing mine, I'm doing this with a smaller needle. Let's back this up one second. Let's take our, our working um, needle, just our regular needle, And we will work these last four stitches. One, two, three, four. Okay. And then your cable was fixed. Okay. The only thing I didn't do, let, let's go back and do that again. Let's try that again. Because what I don't like is I don't like how my stitches were on my left hand needle. Let's try that again. Okay. Go back down to where are, take all of these off so we can see them flat. Take your four stitches, slip those four onto that right hand needle. Let me just take these other four while they're still here. Put them on this left hand needle. And you see how that stitch is mounted incorrectly? Put that left leg in the back. Find our yarn that's lowest down. This one's up higher than that one. So now we're going to knit four stitches. Then we're going to take these four stitches in the front that were just slipped very carefully. Take these off our needle. There. And then you need to make sure you got four. Where's our four stitch? One second. I Somehow I lost a stitch here. Oh, shucks. Oh, 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 oh. Here, this, I see what happened. See how there's a stitch right there? That's not supposed to be there. Let's try that a third time. Third time's a charm. Okay, let's take these off all the way back again. There. Now we got our four. And you can see that this one right here. I'm just going to have to hold it like that because it's not, um, it actually came undone. Get all those back on there. And you see that I'm putting these on the right hand leg. Okay. Now let's go back to where that, I want to go back to where that one is. Do you see how this one's mounted incorrectly? Just take that left hand leg and throw it in the back. See that one right there, I wanna put it back on. It needed to be knit and it came undone. Doing. I don't really like that yarn, how it's caught on there. Not ideal. There, one second here. There, that's better. Okay, so now I have my 
eight stitches and I want to find the working yarn you just take it right on down there and we're going to do a four cable four left so we will slip four two three four knit four one two three four then take those four stitches and put them in the front there you go hold them with that left hand needle I kind of have a double whammy because I'm doing it with alpaca yarn which is slippery and then I have the maximum amount of stitches that I can do with cabling without a cable needle so it is a little more challenging I would say if you're doing this and you're not familiar with it to use a cable needle three and this last stitch to get that last one on there is going to be a little more challenging so what I did last time is I, I just brought it through like that and then I remounted it and reoriented it so the right hand leg was in the front and then now I have my cable back and then what you got to do that was the cable round is you got to go back here again because we have a knit one more knit round where we're just knitting it in the pattern so you got to go back again to those stitches and that that is mounted correctly and I have to see this I consider that as my working yarn and just go ahead and knit those one two three four five six and like I said the last couple are going to give you a little bit of a challenge because you're uh, working that that working yarn is just just enough yarn to be able to work the stitch and I would even check do that one as if it's a drop stitch and just go up and over like that and then um, grab that in there and then just it's a wiggling thing you got to wiggle it but do you see how it's all back in place now and it's oriented in the right direction now as a beginner I wouldn't recommend do it, fixing cables with baby alpaca yarn and I would definitely not fix my cables using um, the uh, with no cable needle cabling without a cable needle so um, but you can see in here that it really isn't that hard you just treat those strands as um, you're working yarn. so those when you're laddering down and you saw that it took me a few times to get it right but all you do is you just take your time and don't be afraid to try over. <laughs> it's totally fine. And I, I always do that. I mean, I, if I have to try it a couple times, I don't mind. I take it as a challenge. <laughs> it's totally fantastic. So um, I like to cable. I like trying to fix my mistakes. And I don't mind spending time working on it. So if you are out there and you're working on a scarf and it has an error in the cable, um, I would go ahead and try and fix it first before you tear it out, tear it all the way down. But like I said, if you have missed a cable altogether, you're not going to have, you saw me working with that working yarn. It's tight. So if you had to, to knit four more stitches without having enough yarn, um, you might want to pull your hair out one strand at a time. <laughs> I, and I'm not even sure if it's possible. I mean, maybe you could put it on a smaller needle and force it um, if you, you know, if you thought that you must be, do that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I, you know my saying, I like it, the yarn that I'm knitting with. So if I have to knit it twice, that means twice the fun for half the price. <laughs> It works for me. So as we're going along and um, we're doing our, I'm showing these different projects and stuff to you, don't forget to vote on these extreme boot socks in brown or gray. And these, I just chose the medium size because that's, I thought most people would be a medium. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, it these are great socks for the winter time if you're um, out side and maybe horseback riding or snowmobiling or skiing uh, these are great socks they something about the alpaca your feet don't get even if your feet are wet they don't feel wet and that water doesn't get next to your skin and uh, when my son and I 
we've done Ride the Rockies several times over the years, and um, we always used our alpaca socks. And when I did horseback riding, I mean, I don't have my horses now, um, but when I did, I was always out at the barn with alpaca socks on. <laughs> totally. I love alpaca socks. And then for this last week, we had this lovely sueno. And it's a, a bamboo merino blend. It's super wash yarn by Scassell or Haiku. And it this is the new tweed colorways. And which one did you say was the, the winner? Coral. The coral. Oh, yes. I like this coral, too. It's very pretty. See how nice it is? Can you see the back of it? Who's the winner? Um, I'll look and see here. Uh, oh, Janice Levering. Congratulations, Janice. Yippee! You won yourself some Sueno Tweed. And all you have to do is contact us at um, customer service at alpacadirect.com. And we just need your shipping address so we can get it in the mail to you. And you can try this lovely yarn and see how you like it. Now, remember when I did my, um, I'm knitting my projects, that it can feel a little bit ropey until you, um, until you block it, until you stick it in water. And then it, it turns out like that. It turns out so soft. I wish you could feel it. It's so soft and squishy. I have a hard time differentiating the baby alpaca apart from the merino. They're both really, really nice and will keep um, keep you so warm if you make it baby projects or you can make this a uh, hat or something for yourself and you would like it to. I've made a lot of things for myself out of Sueno, and it is one of my favorite yarns. Matter of fact, it's almost a joke here at the office because <laughs> they're like, guess what yarn I'm working with? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they can guess every time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. Knit Club's going to be here soon. It may be a day or so slow because of our Labor Day weekend, mm -hmm. but I hope all of you had a good time out there. It was um, my daughter's birthday over the weekend and she was born on Labor Day. And so, um, yeah, Lauren, it was Lauren's birthday and we were very excited for her. And she just um, left from visiting us. So we weren't able to spend the day with her, but we were able to visit with her on the phone. And, and that was great too. Yes, and our grandbaby's just learning how to talk and it's so cute. She fun. is such a doll. So I hope all of you out there have a great week. This next week, I was thinking, I wanted to talk about uh, um, diff different reversible cables that um, and take a look at those. While we're on this theme, we might as well go through it. And reversible cables means that if you make a scarf out of these cables, they're beautiful on both sides. And what's not to like about that? Uh, I love projects that are reversible. They look great on both sides. So um, I thought we'd take a look at that. So I hope all of you out there have a great week and I will see you next Tuesday.